his last heartbeat. And number one, he was he 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 was beautiful. I mean, it was just he looked so gorgeous. <laughs> Tyler, my son doesn't look gorgeous yet. What the fuck? I've given him like a thousand baths. He never looks gorgeous. I, I actually thought for a minute, I said, is my son a vampire? Like, is he glamming me? <laughs> <laughs> I think glamming makes someone swoon. I think glamming is like trying to hit, like seduce someone. Is my dead son seducing me? Is what I'm hearing from this sick fucking weirdo. Son is about to die. Hmm. And when my my wife and I were um, standing over my son, and um, <laughs> what would you think, Tyler, standing over your lifeless son? I would think, Jesus Christ, I really let this happen. Why did I even have kids to begin with? I fucked up as a parent. I would give him CPR one more time, Tyler. You're always gonna keep trying. You just gotta get in there, get him in your mouth, and get this guy another chance at life. Let's see what Kevin Ash does. He took his, his, his last heartbeat. Um, I just, we were just, at number one, he was, he, he, he was beautiful. I mean, it was just, he looked so gorgeous. Uh, you looked gorgeous, Tyler. Dead? I'm so confused. You look twice. <laughs> God damn it, Tyler. I did it again. All right. You're an end lover. What was the other one? Black lives matter, but your kids don't. Let's just make sure that's the whole thing. Let's see what else he said. No shit in your kid's casket. I'll shit in your kid's casket. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's my favorite part. We should... All right, welcome back to the world's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty DeFaro, only seen here out of Indie Music Studios. At the board is our producer, Abe. And on the other side of the the world, we'll call it, in Florida, is my co-host, Miss Daniela Petro. How are you, my friend? The other side of the world? <laughs> yeah, why not? To make it seem like you live farther than you actually do. I was like, I don't live that far from you. All right, so let's get serious here. So s since you've been doing the show, a couple, couple props I want to give you. Monty DeFaro Instagram has uh, blown up a bit. The Monty DeFaro TikTok page has grow blown up a bit. And Wait, we have a TikTok? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that? I don't use TikTok. My kids use TikTok. <laughs> uh, what are you trying to... Man, oh, man. What? A... You're more youthful than I. You got a TikTok. <laughs> Dude, you like make those crazy ass videos. I love them, man. But I do, I do. I should get a TikTok. The one thing you did was TikTok. introduce me to the. I don't even want to call them gentlemen, right? Um, you mentioned them last week, boyfriend. and then you and I were kind of going back and forth. And then you, I think you shared with me the guy. I think his name is Kevin Scampoli. I guess that's Kevin how you pronounce Scampoli. it. Scampoli, like he's really Italian. Come on, please, enough. The guy looks like he's a freaking. I know you get offended by the Italian stuff, don't you? I do. You, you gotta. Do. You gotta be real or just keep it keep it back. But I gotta tell you, Daniela. That was a lot. That what, was that clip, that clip. I've never seen that clip. That was a lot. That's <laughs> like, enough that's... to make me want to go find this guy and break his little fucking pencil neck. I'm I'm serious. I mean, what what kind of human being? praise on a person who lost a child it's not even funny oh, I, was, I was i was enemy number one with him when i when i first had an introduction with him oh he fucking hated me he hated me 
I was a tranny. I was a whore. I like, how big's my dick? Oh, I got it all. Like, and then finally I just wrote him. I was like, what the hell? Like, what did I ever do to you? And he's like, oh, it's just for laughs. I'm like, well, no. How about you get like the true side of the story instead of making up your own versions and having death threats happen to me because everyone thinks I'm tricking my own boyfriend into dating me and I'm a tranny and I'm not. <laughs> like, and it's just like he was really nice when I first met him, but he's been he's been shit talking. He's been he's been shit talking me and yeah. you. But it, but but again. It goes to what's happening society, right? You sit behind your keyboard. Okay, let's just start with the basics, all right? You're a beautiful woman. You know this, right? You're not, you're not stupid. I mean, you're, 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 you're intelligent, beautiful woman. If you saw, and I got to keep looking down because I can't remember his name, Kevin Scampoli in a bar, would you even look at him? It's not that I wouldn't look at him. If he didn't approach me, he wouldn't be relevant. But if he did, because I, I will give him this. He has a great confidence about him. Um, even with, like, me and him had long discussions before, not even just about, like, mattering like that. Like, we've had, like, about our own personal lives outside of anything wrestling. And, like, honestly, like, he if, if he had that side that I knew and tried to talk to me out of bar. I would give him the time of day. But if he didn't even say hi to me or was next to me, because I try it with everyone that stands next to me. All right. So I'm probably maybe, even maybe, blink an eye. Maybe I'm misreading you, okay, because we are new in this relationship a bit. It's only been a year, I think, or something like that. Are you <laughs> trying to tell me that the guy – all right, not to insult stage four cancer people. Okay, but he looks like he has stage four cancer. I'm being I'm being legitimate here. So, look, I got to imagine that you're kind of into good looking guys. So whether oh, no, he I'm into beautiful men, I yeah. date beautiful men, like or prettier than me half the time. <laughs> there you go. So Kevin Scampoli doesn't you fall in the beautiful man category. You said what I look at him. I said if he didn't say a word to me, he'd be like wallpaper. But I would have a conversation if he initiated it. I would entertain it. Doesn't mean it would go anywhere. And I'm the one to say never say never. You never know. <laughs> yeah. To take but, it would take about five bottles of that even to kiss that, but go ahead. Yeah, but like but that's what I'm saying. Like his personality, if you he, he approached me at a bar with the personality that I've I've met, not what's what we watch, I, I would entertain it. I would. Let's do some shots. Again, being behind a keyboard and having confidence. All right, let's put it this way. Do you think in holy hell that he would walk up to Kevin Nash, that guy you saw speaking? Oh, I and would say something to him about his son. Shit to his face. Hell no. Exactly. Nope. And and again, what kind of immoral animal? Because that's what he is. Would he, even if you want a million views? And by the way, I looked at the video. Three hundred sixty-four views. Right. There, it's there's a level that you shouldn't cross. Where it's it's. I know I can I can laugh at some dark humor. I've laughed at some fucked up shit, but I've also gone through a lot of fucked up shit. So I feel like I kind of earned my way to laugh about some things. Because if you don't laugh, you're crying. I get it. But like, there is a level you shouldn't. You, that's too far. Like now it's not funny. Now it's just you're. That's like watching a live comedy show, and you just know you're not getting any laughs for that. Like, people are like, really? Did you just say that? Like, that's 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 too dark. That's demonic dark humor. I don't find it funny. And then people could be looking and going, why are you putting him on the beginning of the show? Because I felt that it was so ir irrehensible. Is that the right word? I don't know. Correct me. Um, I know. I was <laughs> Right. Um, I want attention brought to this guy because that – I don't think I've seen anything worse from that on the internet in a very, very long time. I was almost disgusted. I literally wanted to go find this guy and rip his fucking head off. Some of some of the stuff, like I, I will say, like, and I can only really go because, like, I've only watched it a lot of the times because I'm like, oh god, he's talking about me. 
some of the stuff I'm like, damn, like there was um, a chick that was a wrestler or used to be a wrestler that I guess has some type of stomach hole or something. I watched one of the episodes recently where he was talking about her and I guess like she tried ending her life and he was like, fucking do it already. Like do it like the girl that killed herself on her live stream. Like fucking do it. Stop talking shit and just do it. I'm like, oh my God. Like what the fuck? Like don't say that. Like. Like, and it's just, it's just mind blowing because like I've had private conversations with him. So it's just like, damn, are you really just doing this for views? Cause like, I really thought he was a cool ass guy. And then it's just like, now you you're gonna, you, you had can't. a good conversation with me one night and then you throw me under the bus the next day saying like, I'm a crazy bitch and I probably made all this shit up for like, You can't wow. be cool and act like that. You wash no, everything you away with that type of bullshit. It's unforgivable to be honest with you, and it it it's 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 sickening to my. It's just even if it's like, oh, I was just doing it for like you know people watch. No, no, that's no. Again, no one's watching anyway. No one's watching anyway. All right, girlfriend of Brooklyn activist had trouble picking out murder suspect in lineup. Could hurt case, experts say. The girlfriend of a slain New York City activist, Ryan Carlson, was unable to pick her boyfriend's suspected killer from a photo lineup. And by the way, there's a picture of her face-to-face -face with this guy that killed her boyfriend. What do you think about that, Miss Not I'm not going to lie. It, it's, it's hard. So I was held up by a gun actually just a couple months ago <laughs> and I was we were literally just beats away from each other and when they came it took five hours five hours for a different officer that had nothing to do with the scenario completely random stranger don't even know this guy I've never seen him before in my life pointed a gun at me called the police they're like all right can you pick him out will you do a lineup are you want to do a lineup I'm like well yeah it's my neighborhood I want this guy in my neighborhood Five hours later, five hours later, I already fell asleep. Cop comes, knocks on my door, shows me a bunch of pictures. And I'm not going to lie. Granted, this guy was Caucasian. So for me, they're all looking the same, all little white boys. And I saw this guy two feet in front of me, pointing a gun at me. And literally the detective called me. He was like, you picked the wrong guy. I'm like, are you shitting me? I'm like, what are we going to do for now? He's like, we got to see if there was other witnesses. If they, if they were, you know, if this happened to them, I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, now I feel like an idiot. Like, I, I saw him straight in my face. Like, how did I pick the wrong guy? But it can happen. So, like, from sadly firsthand experience, I feel her on that. Like, it sucks. Did you feel but guilty that you almost gonna... put the wrong guy in jail? Well, they're not going to. They're not going to, like, put the, you know, completely <laughs> random person. Dude, and the worst part about it is all, like, just the little beavers. Like, they're all, like, 15, 18 years old. Like, they could be my son's age. And I literally picked the wrong one. And that's, like, it's insanity. And I was so dead set. But you also figure with law enforcement, they have to have a non-biased person be involved that's not part of doing the police or the investigation to then take that person to then look at uh, pictures and, and whatever question, because they're going to question the person who I'm accusing of because he was technically still in the neighborhood. Now I got to shoot and go pick a picture hours later to make sure that's the same guy he questioned. Mm. And I was wrong. Well, I guess so I should, maybe I should correct myself because I was pointing the finger at this girl and being like, boy, oh boy. No, you, you just never know until you're in that scenario. Like you really, and that's kind of crazy that, that, that part I must have skimmed over with what we were going to topics about because that I would have hundred percent. I literally just had that happen to me hmm. and it was just some hooligan in my neighborhood. Just like trying to act big and bad. And I live in a really quiet, <laughs> pristine neighborhood. So it was like, God, I picked the one white kid to like run into that has a gun. Justin Bieber looking motherfucker. <laughs> like, and it looks like every single one of them. <laughs> All right, I got one more yeah. thing, and then we got a commercial break, and we're going to get to our special guest. I love this guy. He uh, Wait till you meet this guy. He's an incredible, incredible human being. I know. I'm excited. Yeah? I am. 
Okay. Come on now. He's part. What, what are they called? What are they called? Um, what's what's their little group called? The bloodline. You know, line? not that group. The bloodline. The bloodline. That's, that's a strong like. See, that's a guy. That's a guy. If you see in a bar, like you want to like hook up with, be like, "Yo, what's up?" Not uh, yeah. What's his name? That would probably Sputnik. be approaching. What's that guy's name? Sputnik. We'll call him Spuck. Spuck. Sputnik Cancer Kevin Face. Kevin Scapoli. No, Scapoli. Sputnik Cancer Face. That's his name. <laughs> now you're stupid to his level. He looks no, like I'm a penis not. Say it. Say this after me, Daniela. Like Please. He does the cancer piece. Say this after me. Sputnik cancer face. You could say it. Try Sputnik it. Sputnik cancer, cancer face. Very good. Very good. I like it. <laughs> All right. Trying not to talk about this, but a, I'm trying to stay out of the land of the riddle. I'm doing the best I can, but every week something comes up. Recently, Don Tony mentioned on his show that Matt Riddle has chosen him to interview him and speak the truth about what's going on in his career. You know I'm waiting for this. <laughs> but Don Tony has decided to pass on the interview and give it to somebody else. Comments, young lady? Really? <laughs> really? He paid you of all people that he wants to just, you know, <laughs> I want to just tell my truth. And I'm going to pick you, Don Tony. Because you've literally made my name so good out there with the information you've been given. <laughs> I got bronchitis and two ear infections. I wasn't fucked up in an airport. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me let me like get the truth straight. More probably wants to do the interview with Don Tony so he can fucking curse his ass out. Like, bro, you made me look like a jackass. Like, stop going through my girlfriend for information and go through me. <laughs> So I'm going through my publicist. <laughs> All right. You that girl is literally giving. When she did her interview with Don and Tony, I swear to God, I was like, when the fuck did Nisha Montana become Matt Riddle's publicist? <laughs> like, oh, boy. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, oh, God. My, my makeup's right. <laughs> Maybe we'll have Sputnik. I just think it's funny. We'll have Sputnik Cancer Face interview him, I think. What do you think? I want to fucking interview him. What are you talking about? He'll never let he'll never let you, he'll never let you do. But what I want to do though is I got to convince Don Tony to come on the show so you can interview Don Tony. You would do that, oh, wouldn't you? Oh God, he would fucking hate that shit. I was watching him the other night, and he's like, "I don't have any clean T-shirts. I didn't do my laundry." I'm like, "Aren't you a married man?" And I think like, they live separately, from what I understand. There's nothing. That's wrong why with I was that. like, "Don't you have, don't you have a wife?" I think I kind of like that. You get married, but your wife lives in one place, you live in another. Unless you need a green card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. November 11th, Paul London comes in studio along with cheerleader Melissa. I would like to thank the band that sings a theme song for Monty the Farrow and Jimmy Farrow. By the way, Jimmy Farrow will be back joining us next week, Daniela. Are you excited for that? What? Yes. He's coming back? He's coming back, along with his partner, well, Bart go, Griggs. I want to sit on Phil's lap. <laughs> what? I want to sit on Phil's lap then in the square. <laughs> oh, you can't. You can't sit on Phil's lap. He needs to concentrate. <laughs> along with Jimmy Farrell, make up the band with Stereo Hall. With Stereo Hall, sing such great songs in my dreams. This life not far behind, and here comes the rain. You can find their music on the Stereo Hall YouTube page, where you hit like and, uh, and subscribe. <laughs> Okay. Spotify. Are you drinking some Apple, fucking good wine? <laughs> Apple Music, Reverb Nation. No, I'm drinking Jim Beam right now. Uh, oh. Monty DeFaro can be seen on the Monty DeFaro YouTube page, the Monty DeFaro Facebook Live page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, the Monty DeFaro Twitch TV page, and in New York, if you're lucky. You know, people see you in New York now. They're all asking me, who's this girl? Who's this girl? I don't who's even know what to that tell them. Girl? I'm a different girl every week. You notice that? You know what? I, you know what I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him you're Switzerland. No, I'm not neutral. I definitely have my own country. <laughs> I'm not that nice one. I'm that one that's like. I want. I want. I want evil Danielle. That's what I want. I like evil Danielle. Angry bad guy. evil I'll, Danielle. I'm your heel. I look like a little voodoo witch queen right now. You do. 
Channel 115 every Tuesday at 9.30 and at 11.30 a.m. On Channel 20, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. They moved our time, so I'll be announcing that next week. We're also on something called the Intuitive Network. It's spelled I-N-2-I-T-I-V-E Network. It's like a Netflix. It's got movies. It's got documentaries. It's got music videos. It's got everything. And best of all, it's free. free. That's it. You can't be free. And who's the top of the line for Intuitive Network? It is the Monty and the Pharaoh Show, along with my co-host here, Miss Daniela Petro. We will be back after this break with the great Lloyd and Hawaii. I think I got that right. Yes. Lloyd will correct me, though, because I screwed it up last time, because you know how bad I am with words. We'll be You're right back after this words. message. <laughs> Sir, ah. Manscaped, uh -huh. uh, you know, have you tried the new equipment that's been sent? I'm afraid because it says Weed Whacker. <laughs> I'm scared. Maven, Manscaped, what are you thinking about Love Manscaped, it. dude? You Love what? it. What do you use it for? Necessity. <laughs> what don't I use it for? Put it this way. <laughs> the only hair <laughs> I have on my entire body is these eyebrows yeah. that oh. you see. These wow. caterpillars racing to the middle of my nose. That's it. <laughs> that is it. That's all, that's all I have. And that's all I want. That's the so pick. manscaped there's a must. We were talking before the show. There's nothing worse than just hair. Yeah. Right? Hair on a woman, hair on a man. It's just bad. Absolutely. And it's the one thing that the older I get, it starts growing more in unwanted areas. Absolutely. I hate it. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh oh. Just going to go out there. Oh, boy. Go for it. You're doing a deed. Yes. <laughs> Again, I don't want you to have to admit this because we... As men, we try not to admit this, but if you're going to oh, go do I the know deed it. on a woman, I know would you rather have her be hairless or a little hair, racing stripe, or <laughs> racing stripe. full retro bush? <laughs> racing well, stripe. Retro bush is out. Yes, thank you. Retro bush is out. Yeah. Um, I don't mind a small, well-manicured landing strip. <laughs> Every now and then, if it's completely, and I'm talking like baby's ass bald, Mm. Then I, I start, where is that pedophilia line that yeah. I'm, that I'm, I don't, I don't wow. want to wander into that. Oh, that's very interesting. Like that. I never thought about wow. that. You're a smart dude. Holy yeah. shit. So if the landing strip is clean enough for the plane to go in smoothly, you're cool with that. If the landing strip is, has, like I said, well manicured, yeah. you yeah. can see both sides. It's not. Like blinking lights on both sides of that I landing? just don't, I don't want, <laughs> you know, I don't want the shrubbery going off into yeah. unwanted areas on that gotcha. as well. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, look but what you found. Ooh. I got to be all honest, gotcha. though. Hey, the, ah. the, the older I get, though, I don't, I think, I don't think I can be as... Uh, I as, found as, it! Ha, I found have it! Have you ever gone down there and, like, just, like, you, she slowly brings down the underwear? Then what is... Retro. Just, Absolutely. You're retro? like, whoa. Wow. Yeah, like, I'm 46, like, it pops out? Do you, like, walk out, or what do you do? No, I, try, I muster through. I muster up the courage to get a through. trooper. <laughs> yeah. He's a trooper. <laughs> got to give him an yeah, not all Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, I, there you no, go. I, uh, I, there you listen, go. Can't, I couldn't, I Super couldn't say it. I couldn't say it. Well, <laughs> if you have the same beliefs as Maven does, Manscaped could help you. Absolutely. The weed whacker. Absolutely. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I may have to, like, you know, go in a room, close the door, and hang out with the weed whacker for a little while. Yeah, I think you're a retro guy, aren't you? I like 70s adult films, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, with Ron that, Jeremy, we're going to take a quick Batman. commercial break, and we'll be back with this wrestling icon, Maven. We will see you in a drop kick second. A uh, drop kick. All right, welcome back to the world's number one pro wrestler <laughs> broadcast, Monty and the Farrell, where we're welcoming our special guest, Lloyd and Hawaii. Lloyd, how are you, buddy? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. It's so good to see you, man. You look fantastic. How are you? Thank you, man. I'm doing great, man. Uh, it's been about six and a half, going on seven months since my uh, my kidney transplant, and um, I'm doing fabulous, man. I feel great, getting my energy back, and you know, God is good. Well, God bless. I was just about I, I to ask you about you. your surgery. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I, I was great. It, it was awesome. You know, I mean, uh, it was scary, you know, to, to think about it. But, uh, you know, uh, it came pretty fast. 
once we found out that everything went through, uh, within a week and a half, the doctors were ready to do the surgery. And, uh, you know, thank God to my wife. She was my perfect match. And I actually did a documentary. It's out there. You know, um, I'll share it with you guys. Uh, but uh, take a look at it. And it just goes through the whole time from the beginning to the end, what we went through and what God gave us. And it's a, it's a great documentary. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker. You know, I'm softy here. You don't know that yet, but like you, you said wife. You said if it wasn't for my wife. So now you got to tell me about her. Well, you know, I did. Uh, actually, I was on uh, dialysis for about a year and a half, and uh, all through the time, you know, when we found out that my kidneys were failing. She was always by my side and she kept saying, don't worry, babe, we're going to get through this, you know. And as I was on dialysis, she was like, don't worry, I'm going to give you a kidney. So I kept telling her, you know, don't say that because I don't want you to get upset if you're not. Oh, but at the end, it, she took the test and, man, it, the doctors were amazed. They said it was one out of 100,000 that a wife and a husband would be a perfect match like we were. I mean, not just blood, size, tissue, everything. It was it was awesome, man. It was just it was it was a miracle. It really was. Where do you find these amazing guest men and their amazing wives? <laughs> Why did I date the douchebag in wrestling? Like By the way, yeah, Lloyd, this, is, this is this is my new co host, Daniela Petro. Um, she, uh, Pharaoh moved down to Florida. So Danielle has come to join the team. She's done the wonderful jo job, but unfortunately or fortunately, cry she cries every episode, every but episode. Like you, uh... Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. She got a soft heart. It's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> and I heard, I heard a lot about you, Daniela, and, uh, I, uh, I'm glad to meet wait, you. Wait, wait, good or bad? <laughs> Good or bad. It's all good. You know, it's all good. I don't like to hear negativity, so it was all good. Aw, thank you. Lloyd. So I, I, I got a question. You got, you got them strong genes yes. in your family. You got them strong genes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah they run, they like run real cannons. strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got, we, we resemble each other somewhere or another, you know what I mean? But, uh, it's definitely strong in our genes, and uh, you know, I just say we're all blessed, and we all have a great, you know, career with the professional wrestling. Uh, the family's doing well. I mean, uh, you know, you're seeing on TV for yourself, Roman and the the Usos and uh, Solo Sikora. Jay is honestly, you know, Jay you know, is my my baby. I love Jay. Jay and I had an amazing time when I <laughs> met him at WrestleMania, and he is honestly yeah. a very big. He's such a sweetheart. Your whole family yeah. is such a sweetheart, honestly. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate but that. But y'all are good looking, too. I'm not going to knock that. Y'all got them good genes. No, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Got that little, Let me knock got that little something. Wife, Let me knock it got that little something, something. <laughs> I don't want your wife coming in the camera like, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, she ain't from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> last week, last week we almost had a cat fight over the internet, Lloyd. Oh yeah. Lord! <laughs> Brenda Sarr's wife that came in the middle of the though. interview screaming that she's from Jersey, and you know, don't mess with oh, my no, man. I'm... I mean, it was my fault. I told her I wanted to be her sister wife. <laughs> she didn't like that. <laughs> well, that explains it, right? <laughs> so I gotta. Let me let me let me tip it down now. I'll let my let Mike speak a little bit before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> All right, Lloyd. So, <laughs> Alpha yes, Junior is uh, battling some heart problems, right? He most recently put out a GoFundMe page. How's his health going right now? Do you know? Uh, my younger brother. He's doing he's doing good. You know, he's home. Uh, you know, he just has to listen to the doctor, and uh, you know, he has to take care of himself. Uh, you know. Any kind of situation, any kind of uh, illness like that, it's, it's serious. So he definitely has to uh, take his time and recover. And, you know, like I said, thank God he's home and he's he's, he's doing okay. But, uh, you know, he still needs all the 
you know, the support and everything from the fans and from the wrestling community and everything. And also he has all the support from his family. So, uh, you know, I'm just glad he's, he's, he's alive and he's still with us. Can I, I want to ask you about that, right? So the GoFundMe page is out there and to the normal person, right? You guys are entertainers and loved by millions and I get it. But my first thought process is, right, here's this uh, rich, when I mean rich, rich in the wrestling world family. And they've got this, he's got this health problem. And he puts a GoFundMe page out there. And I think to myself, like, don't they have enough money, like, within the family to help this guy out? Am I out of line for thinking that? No, um, you're not the first one that said that. But, you know, you got to understand, you know, you try to do things on your own. You don't want to, you know, bother the family for anything. But, you know, the family will come in and help. Uh, and I believe they are doing so. But, uh, you know, uh, I believe the GoFund was done by his uh, brother on his mom's side. So somebody else put it out for him, you know, and uh, try to get the help, you know, for what he needed. And uh, I also had to go fund myself, you know, but, uh, you know, I just, the hospital asked us actually to do it because myself and my wife were both out of work. I couldn't wrestle and she was out of work because, you know, she gave me her kidney. So that was a tough situation right there. But, you know, we all make it through. And uh, we thank everybody out there that does help us and support us. And, um, you know, to answer that question again, you know, family, you'll be family. But, you know, you try to do things on your own and uh, they'll come in and help. But if you if they don't, you know, you, you try to do your best to do what you can do. Well, I appreciate your honesty on that. Too, with like with like GoFundMe, especially for like being a wrestler, the fans want to see you. And it's like, and you're, you're, you're struggling through medical conditions. And it's like, I, I don't knock the fact of having a GoFundMe because, you know, you all make different wages and family or not, they want you back. And in order to get you back, sure. you need to get your health and you need to get things taken care of. And you may not be in the space to do that. So I honestly, fans want it. I'm not going to knock it. They buy your t-shirts, they buy your gear. Why can't they help pay your medical bills? My personal thing Totally understandable. Yeah, I, I get you. You know, but um, you're right. The fans want to see you. Uh, I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm uh, actually able to go back out and put myself back out there on the, as you say, in the market. <laughs> I don't know. If that's what I <laughs> no, don't say, but, say that. Don't say you know. that. You're not on the market. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to chop uh, chop meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so I'm glad just to put me. myself I'm out there. The heel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't be the heel but uh, yeah, I'm you glad. That... It's my fault. <laughs> All right, well, I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm on the market. <laughs> no, I'm just glad to be back out there and uh, doing these, uh, you know, uh, conventions and stuff like that, and. Uh, I'm tempted to get back in the ring. You know, I, I actually did one time already, and it was all right, you know, but uh, it wasn't nothing major, not a full match. But, I, I, again, I'm just feeling great. I'm getting my energy back, and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, I have another question. So, I heard Shoot you were me, adopted. Girl. I had. Huh? I heard you were adopted. Yeah, who said that? Am I reading that right, Mike? You can chime in. Weren't you, weren't, <laughs> weren't you adopted into the uh, into the family or brought into the family? No, we have different moms. Our family, okay. you know, uh, my brother, so I have See, that's my why mom. I asked. Which we have I to get my, gotcha. I'm new to this world. Remember, I was dating the world. I wasn't in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So now I try to learn about every guest that we have, every type of thing. I'm I'm starting to I'm start. I'm I'm getting my wings. I'm, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning little by little, you know. Sure. So I always try to clarify things have, that I hear or see. Or, yeah. Well. Well, what it is is uh, you know, we have the same dad, but we have different moms. So, you know, people see us with different moms, so they're like, all right, what's going on? But that's what the story is. I got gotcha. you. That's my half brother, half sister. <laughs> like, there you go. So it's still carrying them strong <laughs> ass jeans though. <laughs> you all have the resemble. It's, it's, yes. it's that's that million dollar smile. That's what it is. You all have that million dollar smile. Well, we you know, we try to, you know, I mean, we try to take care of ourselves. 
try to keep up with it, you know, with, with all the health problems going on, you know what I mean? You got to try your best to come back at 100%. <laughs> You know what, though? You're smiling through it. And just even that, the good spirits, faster recovery. They always say that. You keep your spirits up, you recover a lot faster. Yeah, well, and I just keep my faith in Yes, yeah, sir. I want, I want to just ask you back, going back to the surgery, you know, again, I understand she's your wife, but that, that is like the ultimate sacrifice, right? That, that is, that is, That's a good woman. That is, a, that is an incredible sacrifice. It really shows true love. In your mind, because yes. she's going through the same surgery you are, right? They're they're taking her kidney and giving it to you. Um, what what was going through your mind at the time of that surgery? Were you mostly thinking about your wife? Were you thinking about both of you? Like, what goes through your mind going through such a major surgery? Uh, you know, it's actually in my documentary that I did. Uh, it when the time was to do the surgery. I was nervous for both of us, but I, my main concern, to be honest with you, because uh, they actually took her first, you know, because they had to take her kidney out and then, you know, get me prepared. The first thing that was going through my mind is, is my wife okay? You know, because things can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that was going through my mind. And I was, you know, worried about myself as well. But, you know, knowing that they took her first, you know, I was, I was really worried about her. And I was just so happy that everything came out right and uh she came she was fine and i pulled through the surgery and everything worked out you know so that was something that definitely was on my mind though we mike talking... he's a leonardo dicaprio in titanic oh yeah yeah he is <laughs> lord we were talking about my wife's away in la right now and i was i was saying boy it was so peaceful at the house and stuff being oh, that your God. wife is your savior like that, is it like when she pisses you off, you're just like, oh, forget it. I'm just going to let it slide right by. It doesn't change like that. I mean, <laughs> you, you, I, I am totally, I mean, I am, t let me, let me rephrase that. I, I am totally grateful for what she did because she didn't have to do that, but her love and, you know, for me, is there and and i am so grateful and for her and the good lord putting her in my life uh you know so you know we we you know we're still gonna have our our little arguments here and there or you know our little scuffles here and there you know does she pull the mom card does she pull the mom card like when my kids piss me off i'm like i gave you life is she like i gave you a kidney no no she didn't you know. dishes. <laughs> i'll take that shit back if you don't step up son I will right now. I'm taking it back. <laughs> no no I she didn't do that man. you know I gave you life. <laughs> <laughs> no she didn't do that she she uh actually you know she's just happy that she could do it for me to give me a second chance at life and i'm just grateful i really am you're bound forever. You know that, right? Yes, definitely. You know, bound I, forever. she actually went away a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, as she was gone, I was calling her and I was telling her, I, 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 I told her, I said, I'm sad. And I said, and I feel sick. And she's like, what's wrong? What's going on? And I said, I'm sad. And my kidney's sad because his, his, his partner's not here. And she started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I said, is his, his other now kidney's he's not here? I said, so my kidney to another level of sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call you know, it when you lose a little like? Right? <laughs> We're having phantom symptoms but, uh, without you here. <laughs> there you go, yeah. I, I had to pull that card, you know, because I was missing her, you know, and she was gone for a week. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I had to tell her something, you know, to uh, tell her, here we go, come home. <laughs> you know what? This is This is like... You know how some couples do the name tattooing? This is like, she, he has my kidney. I have her kidney. Yeah. It's on a whole nother level. Yeah. <laughs> oh, incredible. yeah, for sure. It, it is. It, it is incredible. And, uh, you know, man, there's so many jokes you can say about it and all that. But deep down. I'm waiting for the day you really piss her I, off and she pulls a mom card and she's like, I give you my fucking kidney. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We be doing that. We be doing that. Hey, you know what? You know, yeah, I, I get it. But you know, when she does that, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit there and go, okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs>
Lloyd, you talked about getting back in a ring. You got in the ring once. Do you think as you you get stronger, this is something you're going to want to try and do again? Yeah, but to be honest with you, um, I'm looking at doing other things like behind the scenes and, you know, maybe going, I, you know, I try to, you know, I've been re reaching out to WWE, trying to go back as an agent or producer. Um, you know, things are up in the air, but if it doesn't happen, I'll try for the next one. But, uh, you know, that's something that I, I, I want to do, you know, help the younger generation and for the knowledge that I know and see if I can help them uh, in any way. Because, you know, I've done 37 years and I'm not saying I did everything in my career, but I've done the majority of a lot of stuff that a lot of guys probably won't even do. So I'm, I'm thankful for the things that I've done in my career and, uh, you know, now to move on and help somebody else in their career. Mm. Now, I have a question also. Was it expected of you to be a wrestler or was it a passion? Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it wasn't a passion until I got into it, to be honest with you, because, you know, I was seeing my dad, my uncle, and my older brother and cousin in the ring and all that. And I was young at that time. So then I decided to just get involved in it. And what happened was when my dad uh, moved the gym here uh, down to Pennsylvania, up to Pennsylvania, I'm down right now. Uh, we opened up the gym and uh, I just started helping them train the students. And before you know it, I was wrestling and I, I started my career at 15 and that was back in 1985 and I did in-ring wrestling. I started around end of 86, 87. You're in Pennsylvania? What part of and Pennsylvania are you in? I'm not in Pennsylvania. I used to live in uh, near Allentown. I used to live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I used to live in Wilkes-Barre. Okay. I used to go shopping well, at the Allentown Steamtown Steamtown Mall. <laughs> okay, uh, where are you at right I now? Didn't know you're from, I didn't know you grew up in Pennsylvania. That's kind of cool. I just didn't well, know, like, not, because of the raised, family but, yeah, I grew up, yeah. you were expected to do this. Hey, I'm yeah, in, I'm I mean, in it's, New York. it's kind of natural, you know what I mean? We're not <laughs> it's kind of natural, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're in New York, and where are you at? Well, I, <laughs> it, was a, it was a poor attempt at a joke. Lloyd, we op Honestly, I'm in my own world. I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm in my own world. <laughs> we, op we opened the show, um, you know, in today's world, right? Everybody's a singer. Everybody's an actor. As well as you know, anybody can become, can become a wrestler now too, right? Um, of course. Shit, I'd make a good wrestler, at least a good heel. Yeah, there you go. Just there you saying. go. You would be a good wrestler, uh, you know, Daniel. Good heel. A good heel makes a good baby face too. I don't know exactly. if she could be a heel because she wasn't healing on uh, that guy. So anyway, the guy we were talking about earlier, I don't know if you saw it. With I Kevin. said he looked like a dick, like you, a penis. You weren't healing on him enough. Um, <laughs> you heard what he what talked about. What would you think is worse, looking like a cancer patient or a penis? <laughs> that, see, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I said he looked like a penis. That's worse. Than a cancer oh, patient? Damn. I'm not yeah, sure. I, I, I guess you like to enjoy dating a penis then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you, I see where you take a sides. All right. I see how it is. Oh, I'm just asking you. I wasn't <laughs> taking sides. Uh, <laughs> you, know what, you know what it is? It's he's, that good fucking wine. Playing, that I'm not drinking hey, this anymore. Danielle, it's too good. He's, he's playing Switzerland just like you did. It's all good. Oh, God, I wouldn't take Switzerland. I'm too mean. <laughs> so, Lloyd, when you see... A nobody like this guy attack Kevin Nash's son like that. What, what goes through your head? You, you're, you, we we kind of know each other. You always seem like a very yeah. wonderful guy in the times we've spoken. But I mean, does that shit piss you off? Yeah, it does because uh, Kevin's a good dude, and uh, someone to lose your your child. You know, nobody wants to lose their child. Uh, first of all, you know, you always want to go before your child. But for yep. someone to lose their child, uh, that's it's a tragedy, man. And for him to talk shit like that, uh, he deserves a punch in the mouth. And uh, if I ever seen him, uh, definitely uh, I'd, I'd put my foot in his ass. Well, the thing about it is, is you know, you wouldn't have the balls to say that if if Kevin Ash is right there. <laughs> like, it's it's exactly it's you know he he he's, he's talking. Keyboard. 
Yeah, exactly. He's talking behind the camera and the keyboard, and uh, that's as far as it goes. Because if he saw Kevin, Kevin would probably put a hole in his head. You know what I mean? And uh, but you, you know, don't start something if you if you if you can't finish it. So you know, first don't of all, he shouldn't that. have said anything about his, his dead son. You know what I mean? So that's don't talk shit if you get that back yourself up. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know he get wrecked in a heartbeat. I mean, well, we were saying I was telling I was telling Mike that. I, I, I can laugh at some dark humor, but that something like that example, that's just too far for me. Like, I yeah, always feel that like, if you make something something, it becomes something, but then it's like, there's a real fine line of trying to play off humor or views for something like that, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, totally that's good. like, that's like watching horror movies. I won't watch certain scary movies because I'm like, if that person can think that and make it like a movie, that's fucking demented. Like, that's yeah. some sick shit. So it's like, why would you well, want to watch something be, like Yeah, it's going to be demented when Kevin Nash finds him. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure that he's seen it and people sent it to him and I, I'm pretty sure he's not taking that lightly at all. I wouldn't. And oh, I no. And the worst part about it uh, what it, what is that that thing that he's on? It's not it's not I forget what it is. But when people send elixirs, it says I think mm -hmm. my son's glamming me. And they literally every time someone sends things that his voice and I, I was like, now I didn't I never seen that Kevin Nash thing until now, and now it makes sense mm -hmm. of why that every time someone would send two hundred elixirs, it's like oh I think my son's glamming me. I'm like what the fuck does that mean? And it's like that's yeah. fucking fucked up like you have that yeah, every that's, time that's crazy. and i we, never knew that well the re the reality of it is a, a guy like that let's not even call him a guy has never really faced death right he's never you know he's probably been you said he's a cancer patient he <laughs> well he looks like one he is well, hopefully he is one now <laughs> but anyway um but he's probably never faced death and you know when you face yeah. death like many people do like lloyd you face death i face death we were talking about my surgeries before we came on um you yeah. know you you kind of learn how to respect life but i mean a young piece of trash like that probably just doesn't get it and he needs someone to beat his ass i would think right oh no i'm a mother who who buried a child and i watched mm. my child die and after seeing that which I, I told you i've never seen that episode that makes me disgusted Cause I would never ever want someone taking the, cause it took me a while to even be able to express what I went through without breaking down. So it's like to, for him to, if this is how he wants to remember, that's a great experience of how he tragically lost his son, his mm. son passing. A, a parent does never expect to bury a child, mm. but it's like, as me, yeah. as a parent who has buried a child and you are going, that is a line. People remember the little, our little, our little favorite fan on, on X. They, mm. they love posting about my child's death. And it's just like, w like, why, why would you go that far? Come at me and my character. You want to talk about Kevin Nash, whatever. Why are you going to bring up his son passing? Well, Why are you going to do that? The, the whole idea behind it is if he wants attention, I'm going to bring attention to him. Because obviously he wasn't yeah. getting enough attention. So now we'll give him the attention. Talk shit about for. us. Yeah. Let's see. Fuck well, it. Danielle, first of all, I want to, uh, you know, give you my condolences. I'm sorry to hear. I didn't know that, you know. And my blessings are with you. You know, I don't know how long it's been since you lost a child. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a tragedy, been... like you said. About 11 and, uh, years. You know, so I can, my time has healed, so it's well, easier to talk about it now. So, but, sure, but it, it, it never but heals. It gets a little easier as it goes by. It's easier with every year, yeah. yeah. But definitely, it's but like, one of those yeah. things where it's just those, those are fam some family. It's like eh, even even like me, I don't even like my mother. But if someone talks shit about my mother, I'll be like, don't talk about my mom. I'll call her a fucking bitch. You can't yeah. call her a fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> there's some lines yeah. you can't cross. Like, you got to keep things like off limits. And I feel like nowadays, even with, even with wrestling, even with think like, or the uh, UFC guy, uh, Logan Paul and them taking in the girlfriend, like people are really going deep and bringing out outer things when it doesn't even involve the person that they're having any issue with. And it's just sure. like, are you just doing yeah. this for publicity? Are you doing this for views? Like, what is it for? Right. It's unnecessary. Right. 
Yeah. But I do feel like That's the fine sick. lines are being crossed big time in society and with social media and with television. It's just like, it's, we have to have some type of, as society, we have to have some type of boundaries with entertainment that you just can't go that far. You can't go that extreme and keep it where it's yeah, at and stop bringing up outside issues, you know? Like you were saying, like, he, you know, he hasn't faced a life experience, you know, life or death experience, but it shouldn't have to take that for him to humble his heart. You know what I mean? To sit there and yeah. say, especially by some, you know, son or, or kid that's that's dead. You know what I mean? It's just, that's that's just being pathetic and, and, and sick. You know what I mean? And that's what he is. He's an asshole and he's sick to do that. You know, I, and I'm not I just can... saying that Kevin's a good friend of mine. I'm just saying in general, even if he said it about somebody I didn't even know, you know, you just don't do things like that. I can't even imagine I love that going to bed you got at night. Right there. That's sexy. <laughs> that passion you got is sexy right now. I, I can't imagine going to bed at night and even feeling like, how could you even feel good about yourself after knowing what you said? You know what I mean? It's just, it's sickening. Listen, Lloyd, I want to get to something a little more positive. Um, sure. Recently, Shannon Moore was on an interview and he was talking about Umaga um, and he said how close he was to Umaga and when Umaga passed he had wished that he had passed because that's how much he loved him. Can you talk about Umaga at all and the type of person he was in real life? Yeah uh, well we called him Eki you know uh, he Eki was just fun and just loved life he you know you seen him, he was always laughing. He, you know, if you needed something, he always, you know, if he had it, he gave it to you. And just people enjoyed being around him. And, um, you know, he is truly missed, really, truly missed. Just like the rest of our family members, like Yoko and, uh, you know, uh, Rosie, Matt, they're all missed truly. And, uh, you know, it's something that uh, is been taken away from us. But you know what, they'll always be in our hearts and always be in the hearts of wrestling fans. And a lot of the boys that were close to them, you know, like you said, Shannon, and another one that was like Carlitos and Shelton Benjamin were very close with Eki, you know, Maga. And, uh, you know, they all, you know, we talk about them a lot, you know, when we're together, you know, we'll talk about them and, and you know, bring up things, but uh, it's never forgotten. And, you know, I, I can understand where Shannon's going to, because when you're close to somebody like that, you know, he's not even family, but to be that close and feel that way, he had true love for my cousin, and I appreciate that so much. I think you guys do a good job just as family on, on keeping that spirit alive because you do see the essence in you guys as wrestlers with the generations before you. So it's like it does, yeah. even with the passing of one of them, you guys do a really good job of just holding honor and, you know, almost like making him proud, but with doing your own thing still. But it's, you can definitely see it's carrying on through generations. And I think that's honorable in itself. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, we try, we're, we're a close family and, you know, we all cater through our differences. You know, a lot of family members go through differences, but you know, the love is there. At least I know I love all my family. You know, I can have situations or problems with one or another, but you know what? The love is there from me because, you know, that's all you have is family. You know, besides your immediate family, you have family. And, you know, if you don't love them, who do you got? I mean, you, friends come and go, but family will always be there. So, so what are you the most proud of in your whole life? What are you most proud of? I am proud, first of all, to be alive number one, but I am so proud that, you know, to be in a big family that we are and, you know, talented family we are and uh, it's just, that's a blessing. And I am proud of being a father of three beautiful kids. And of course, a beautiful wife that I have. Uh, my kids are my heart. Who gave you that kidney? I love them to death. <laughs> yeah, she gave me that kidney. But you know, my kids, I love them to death. I got two boys and a girl. My oldest is a girl, and uh, they're my heart, and I love them to death. So, I'm very proud, you know, to be their father. Now, would it be safe to say, with all that you've gone through, good and bad, would you change anything about it? No. No. 
I'm happy with what I've done in life. Uh, you know, if I was God for the rest of my life, if I was to leave this earth tomorrow, I, I'm happy of what I've done in my life and what, what I have in my life. I love these men that you bring on. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Every this. show, I can't take it. <laughs> like, seriously, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me cry off my eyelashes. You know, you know, it just it's just being humble and uh, I'm you know, supposed to be the right. heel. Heels don't cry. Well, uh, you know what? We do sometimes. I'm a heel too, but <laughs> I cry all the time. So I'm right with you, girlfriend. <laughs> God, I like listening to some of you guys as 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 guests. I'm just like, oh, I'm such a hopeful romantic now. Okay, I can wait. I can do this again. I'll find you. You know, you got I'm, your you got like, your character. But you got your character in your ring, uh, but people don't really know us out of the ring. You know, we're, we're 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 normal people just like everybody else. You know what I mean? We we bleed the same color they do, but they look at us in a different way. And uh, you know, at a wrestling point, but when they are one on one with you and they really see the true side of you, you know, that's where they fall in love with you as not just a wrestler but a person in general. You know, being oh, I one hundred percent agree with that. Being that person, Lloyd, though, you're a big guy, right? And you can intimidate anybody you'd like. What made you become this humble, caring person? Because you could just tell from the first time I spoke to you what a good heart you have. And, you know, you certainly could, you know, be that arrogant, scary guy, right? Like, where did you learn to become humble like this. I was to say, he has the humbleness well, about him. I was, when I was young, we all did crazy stuff. You know what I mean? I did crazy stuff and, you know, we all do some things that you're not supposed to do. But as life went on, you know, you see things different and I just try to keep my faith in the good Lord. And we were raised that way. Um, thank God for my, my dad and my mom, you know, that taught me how to become the man that I, my dad taught me how to become the man I am. And my whole family, grandparents, you know, uh, my dad's father was a, a pastor and, uh, you know, minister and uh, everything. And our family is very, you know, religious, uh, you know, so to be raised in a family that, you know, the way we are, you know, being in Samoa, you know, in Samoa, that's, yeah, you got to go there to see it because it's number one, it's a beautiful island. And we, they say the, the people of the sun and it's totally right because we try to treat everyone humble and respect like we want to be treated. So if that answers your question, you know, I, I'm just glad that I was raised the way I am and, and to be around, you know, my family and, and, and be around that positive vibe. I like his answers. God damn you for being such an awesome person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> everybody knows your family has this lineage, right? Of throughout wrestling for God knows how many years. Um, I think they run WWE. <laughs> well, they pretty much. <laughs> pretty Here's much. the question, though. Who is Vince McMahon? <laughs> Uncle Vince. <laughs> two, two, Uncle Vince. Two questions. One, the funny uncle. He's the funny uncle. <laughs> one, are yeah, you right. all proud that Roman Reigns has become probably one of the most iconic wrestlers in the history of wrestling? Forget about now. And do you put him on the Mount Rushmore of greatest wrestlers ever to step into the ring? And when I mean wrestlers, the whole package, right? Yeah, I mean, I am, I mean, we're all proud of him. I know from my heart to, you know, I, I am deeply happy for him and the Usos, the twins, and, uh, you know, Sefa uh, Solo. I, I'm just so proud of them. And, and I'm just proud of everybody that has been on that journey, you know, even before him, uh, you know, Yoko, my dad and my uncle, my brothers, my cousins, everybody. You know, it's an honor to just, you know, see where how they put our family name you know on the map so you know of course it's 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 a beautiful thing but for roman i mean he's taking it to another level right now and 
I'm I'm just proud. I know we're all proud of him. I'm very proud of him. And, uh, you know, he has stepped that milestone, you know what I mean, to where he skipped and he didn't skip anything. Don't take it the wrong way. But, I mean, to be on that, round, that Mount Rushmore, as you were saying, I think he has just skipped that level and he went up there with some of the greatest. And he is one of the greatest right now. All right, Daniel, you want to hit Lloyd with the final question, the Pharaoh's final question, but we don't have a Pharaoh, so we've got Daniela. <laughs> you, got, you got a queen. <laughs> you don't need a Pharaoh. You Ooh, with green hair. Oh, you, green, green hair. hair. I, I, got, I actually got a wrestling question. If you sure. could take on from all the generations to wrestle, who would you take out of your family? Who would you pick? Damn, you go, girl. That's a great question. I love it. Nice. Well, I'm, say, 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 I'm, I'm going to give myself uh, a little. <laughs> uh, hold on. You, uh, re repeat no, that. Let me let me understand that correctly. Repeat that again. Out of all generations in your family, who would you choose uh -huh. if you could? Present, living, past, to wrestle against. Wow. I know. That that's why I was like, oh, that's a good wow. question. <laughs> I did good. Wow. <laughs> no. For not being a wrestling person, I did good. <laughs> I can't say it would be my dad because I wrestled with my dad and I wrestled against him when I was younger, you know, uh, you know, just starting a business. But someone – out of all our generations of wrestlers, um, I would love to work with my cousin Yoko. Mm. That would be the one. Oh, yeah. I liked him because he kicked Matt Riddle's ass and then he went to rehab. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was coming, Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. sorry. That's why I was like, when I saw he went from NXT, I was like, oh, and he's the one that took Matt out? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Yoko, Yoko, Yoko was a machine for as big as he was, and uh, I mean, it was just an honor for everybody that worked with him. They loved working with him, and that would be someone that I would, you know, if it was to, I would love to wrestle against. I met him, and he is a, oh, honestly, he's. I do think I, I think everyone, honestly, that I met in your family has been amazing. Like they're very. <laughs> we're talking about in-house and wives married it like honestly amazing and i i was a good choice he, he was good and you know i'm a little biased on that one but he was he's good he's a good choice <laughs> now if i was to say everybody you know i mean i can say that but you know i i would love to you know if i had to wrestle against any of them you know because they're all talented and uh you know that's something that uh yeah, and like I said, the good Lord has blessed all of us with, and we just got to keep going with that that blessing and that faith, and keep going and and making the fans proud. You know, watching us on TV or watching Roman and the Usos and all them on TV that are right now, but just loving us, our whole family, and uh, it's it's really appreciated. Well, Lloyd, I'm hoping that they take you in as an agent. I really think that's going to help, uh, not help, but it's going to happen. I'm I think you would have a lot happen. to contribute if you um, did that. I think you have a lot to offer and help with growth and everything if you got that. Without a doubt. Uh, you know, you know, you know. This always, like I said, it's, 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 it's all you know. Keeping your faith and hopefully the good Lord makes it happen because it, you know, it all goes through Him. And I'm sorry, you know, if uh, anybody's religion out there, but I, I, I keep my faith strong and I do, you know, keep it in him you know because he has blessed me with a second chance at life including my wife but it just makes me more humble and and and, and try to leave everything in his hands right now because you know let's 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 admit it you know what i mean you know people that believe in the lord some that don't but i'm a firm believer and i'm going to stick like that no matter what so if, well, I'm uh, if it's it my time the universe. Then, i'm putting it out in the universe Good things for you. Good things are going to come. Good things are going to happen. Exactly. And life is going to be healthy, happy, and prospering. I hope so. And uh, if it does happen, I, I would love to come back on and, uh, you know, talk about it and, and make it official, Don't you know, when that day here. comes. Well, here's a, here's a question, Lloyd, before yeah, you go. You what do you think? Give Grade my new co-host from 1 to 10. How do you think she's doing? <laughs> 
Man, I ain't even gonna lie. I guess she, she's a ten. Though. I like her, man. Thanks. She is straight out gangster. <laughs> I mean, she can take it the way she wants to. And you know, you, 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 need that. you need that. You know what I mean? Because she brings the best out of the uh, the people. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, the your questions and you know, you're you know the way you are. You're great, but she just adds that spice to it, and it's a good mixture. So I, I like it. I told him I it actually helps it. too that I don't know too much about wrestling. It keeps it interesting. <laughs> She's got it. Hey, you're learning how you know how they say you're gonna learn today. <laughs> Well, you know what? And she's got to be a little less Switzerland. I got to break her of that, right? She's got to choose a side. We're not walking white lines here, right? You're either on the right side of the road. Or... What did Mr. Miyagi used to say? You walk right yeah, side, on, you walk left on. side, you walk middle, squish. Lloyd, yeah. I, I got to tell you. Wax on, <laughs> wax on, wax off. I want to thank you again, Lloyd. I got to tell you. I can't say it enough. From the first day I met you, I was just so impressed with you, and uh, I prayed real hard for you because I really, you're you're a wonderful human being, and it's an honor for me to 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 know you. And I could say that I feel like you're a friend of mine. I I would probably do anything for you. So thank you again. You're an incredible human being. I'm so happy. That, that means you. much to me. That's thank my so friend, Danielle. Stop you. getting in on all my stuff all right you see see how he gets jealous he gets jealous well, I I'm, I'm his i'm his i'm his wife for this not his real wife but i'm his wife for this and he gets a little jealous let him have his moment yeah. you know that means so much to me you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah follow me on instagram facebook you know we'll keep in touch but um you know your words right now mean so much to me and you know i've considered you a friend from day one when we first got introduced and we did the show. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, I would love to come on here anytime, you know, even if it's not about me, if it's about another, you know, situation or whatever, you know, just it's, it's awesome. And I really appreciate you guys so much. Uh, so uh, hopefully you know, always in my heart, and I thank you for the blessings. And also my prayers are for you too, as well, because you know, the situation that your situation you were going through and, the good Lord blessed you in many ways and is going to continue to bless you as well. Thank you, man. He got continue. this. You both we'll got talk, this. We'll yeah. talk soon. Thank you again, Lloyd. God bless. Thank you. God bless you guys and uh, see you soon. All right, brother. I'll follow me back. Good boy. <laughs> Danielle, I got to tell you, I love that guy. I really do. I, oh, my God. I you got to stop love that guy. this. You got to fucking stop this. I am literally, these men are like, some of them are a little, you know, uh, they're, they're unique. And then there's some, like, but they all have this, like, oh. Dude, you got a crazy lineup coming up, man. Next week, oh. the week after. Well, can you, like, vet them and find out, like, do you have a wife that you are doldingly in love no, with? No, no. I've and got, does she got, make I've got your it. world, like, everything? Because then I'm going to start crying. And I'm gonna I've got to entertain I gotta, myself. I this bite. is. This is my form I of I entertainment. Food, I, I, I look forward to Thursdays. I love it. I love to see what's going to come out, but again, um, I got to tell one you thing, Dana, one thing. I wanted to say: what, what, what's with the Unabomber look? Why you got a hoodie on and some sunglasses? I just want to try a different look. You. I just wanted a different look. That's all. I'm sporting a Monty and a Faro sweatshirt. You are gonna look like go on to the, the go on to MontyNafaro.com and get your own sweatshirt. Only twenty five bucks. For the <laughs> Listen, I want to I want to give you some props though. You are doing such a fantastic job. I Did you like you. my question? I love your I like questions. My... Unbelievable. I like that question. <laughs> what the? I was proud of myself. Ah! What the? <laughs> 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 That's just wrong. Wrong in so many different ways. Let That's me ask... that dark humor that's not crossing the line, though. <laughs> All right. No, but here's a serious question. Think about this. Lloyd's wife, right? That's like the ultimate sacrifice or love for somebody. One, I don't see it in him, but if it was another man, bro, you better fucking, you better. The only way you're leaving that woman is in your grave. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is, that is, I would do that for my child. Hmm. And this is how I determine love. Before our kids, it was like, I would sacrifice. I would jump in front of a 
bullet to save my husband. But then I had children. I was like, eh, I would jump for a bullet for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know so much about you. I love you, but this this is what I love. So that honestly, like that, that's. I'm telling you, I'm. I hate that I'm. That's big. That that hit like, and to have the cosmic energy, like they both have the same blood type. Every that is literally, if not a match made, to be destined with each other. I don't know what it is. Like honestly, that's 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 that, that's that mind blowing stuff. Like there's definitely something bigger than us. That these two people that have. And this would happen, and they she literally saved his life. That's crazy. Like that's that's something bigger than all of us. Abs. I I, I couldn't. I'm a mother universe type of girl. I haven't picked a religion yet, but I do believe, and there is a bigger power. That right there is. <laughs> we are out there. There's something. I am in control. Like. There, that is so, seriously to find someone that you love that you want to spend the rest of your life with to mother your children and then you go through a life threatening issue and she is your lifeline literally checks up all the marks I mean I, what do you say it was like a hundred thousand or mm. whatever and one or something like it was like that that's your life partner that is your partner for life till death do us part well, think think about him though. Also, right? He's a wrestler, um, without a doubt. Right? When you, you run into that type of medical condition, more than likely your career is over. Think of the mental anguish that he must have went through, and look at the, the positivity that he has. That's what I'm saying. The genuine, like the humble. You literally, as soon as you said humble. I was like, you can just see it. You can see it. I've never met the guy. I've never spoken to the guy. And the humble positivity, the, there's just, you know, he's one of those people that, you, granted, he's went through something traumatic, just like you have. And you stay humble. You don't let it break you. You don't let it make you bitter. You're not angry at the world. You're not, uh, you know, lashing out in whatever which way. You stay humble and you count your blessings. And he said, I was no angel, but I grew up around and I've learned from my mistakes. But that's, that's, you can see it. You can, and honestly, like, granted, you went through too. <laughs> Jesus, God bless you for that. Now, I don't know if I would give a kidney or something. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> might be I, one of those I, moms that might be like, could you, that's you can't advice. blame someone if they don't want to give, like, it. that's a lot to give up. That's not something. That's, that's, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It would be going through my head, like, what if we don't work out? What if we get divorced? Yeah. What if I die, give me my kidney. Right. Like, I would be yeah, like, freaking right. out. Like, but you're right. Like, that, that, and it's the selfish list. Like, I'm, I, she make, she makes selfish list, like, look, she's a saint. She's, his wife is a goddamn saint, honestly. Because there is, there's a lot of risk factors you think about. And being a mother of their children, like, she is risking her life to save her husband's life. But and you know, that is, I, you got to give him is some a, credit, that's too, That's a though. movie in itself. <laughs> but you got to give him some credit, though, too, because I would think if he was a different type of person, say he was sputting a cancer face, I don't think anybody's giving that guy a kidney, right? You know? You just called him Dildo Kev. <laughs> Dildo Kev. I like sputting a cancer face better, don't you? You could call him Dildo Kev. I'll I call him so like Now face. I feel bad. Like, I don't want to be a mean guy like him. Like, because he's, that's a front. He's putting on some type of front. I don't like that front. That's an evil front. That's a nasty front. Well, you that's know what the front part. is, is that I got two inch arms. I look like a little weenie and I'm angry at life because I got a, what a, is, what is a it? cancer a face. A speckle? He looks like a, a little speckle. speckle. He probably has a little speckle. <laughs> a little speckle. Hey, Irish. Hey, Irish. Go sit down. <laughs> You know what they say, oh, right? <laughs> Yo, I was telling Jimmy. No, but... Check this out. I was telling Jimmy, you could tell the size of a man's penis, right? By this. Just look at their hands. That is the length of their penis. Put that I up to them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about all that. Because I've seen some tiny ass hands and I've seen some little ass dudes and 
they were like mini me. It was just like. All right, wait a minute. We're going to go in a minute, but I got to ask that question. Now that you just brought it up, it's like, woo, you get in the room, guy's hot, you're ready to go, and then Speckle comes out. Like, what's going through your head? You're like, this is a waste. No, my first told tell. My first tall tale sign is going to be a speckle when he's better at something else than the actual penetration. I understand. <laughs> he's, got, he's got another body part that could maybe work it over, right? Just like help you out a little. And I'm like, oh, wait. Okay, he's, he's making up for something. Okay. <laughs> did you? Did you? <laughs> but I, I honestly have only experienced that like twice. I have a good, I have a like, I have like a nice like BD. <laughs> BDM, <laughs> like I, 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 I mean, we seen my ex's dick. It's all over the internet. You know, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> that guy can humiliate a lot of people out there. Like that. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, with all, listen. I'm gonna say this respectfully. Just the mere facts that you were with him would wane off a bunch of guys go, you know what, I'm not even going there because it's like I cannot no, compare. Oh my god, it's happened. Don't even they're like, yo, did it, I saw his dick. <laughs> yeah yeah. This is a real thing. Like you took that? I'm like, yes. You don't want to be compared to that. Like how was I? You it's, were good. it's intimidating. Yeah. Listen, it's not about the size. If a woman cares about size, she needs to do her kegels. <laughs> yeah, but the did you Did you have a laugh? As long as it's bigger than my tampon, that's all I care about. As oh, long my as it's bigger God. than my tampon. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bam. Well that's all. That goddamn wine. <laughs> hey, by the way, give me a quick review. Is it good, right? Oh, it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Danielle, I'll see you next week. I will see you next Thursday, my love. I'll talk to you. Be well. <laughs> You've been watching Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty Nefaro. I want to tell everybody out there, thank you again for joining us on Thursday. I love you all. For me and my co-host, we love you. We'll see you next Thursday.